Hey there guys, how's it going? Reaper here and I'm back with another painting video and this one is the Zombie Giant from the Green Horde Kickstarter set and I was originally going to do the um, Living Giant that they've got but I want a Zombie Giant for my D&D game so I figured I might as well do this with it as it is exactly what I want really but we've primed it in standard base grey that I always use it's the High Coat Grey Primer just standard plastic primer and we are doing all the skin color in corpse pale as in the artwork it's a very purpley skin which looks weird like it could work for certain types of giant but i wanted a generic giant creature so i've gone with these corpse pale as it's more flesh tone and looks more natural and it works out in the end so it's all good Also, I'm going to apologize now for the sort of iffy focus that we get because this creature is, well, this mini itself is three, four times the size of a standard mini that I painted. Like the last one I painted was the um, Ardin for Reaper Bones, and he's about the size of his leg. So we're looking at at least double the size of the mini, so the camera's having a bit of issue focusing every now and then. But I, I do what I can to try and fix that, it's just sometimes. It might be a little bit out of focus, but the uh, but the pictures at the end will be perfectly fine in focus, and they actually look really nice. But we are just finishing up on corpse pale now. It does take quite a while to cover this mini, as it is a large mini. But there we go. Corpse pale requires two coats as well, so I do go back later on and do it. But for now, we've gone on to. He's got like it's almost like a skirt, like tunic sort of thing. That's only visible from there in the artwork. So I've tried to stick as close as I could to the artwork and this is a orangey color. So I've used Army Painter's Fire Lizard to do this. As is the only orange color I have at the moment. And I, it's easier to use a color that's ready mixed than to mix my own in case I don't have enough. Because that is the problem with mixing colors. Unless you are perfect at measuring them out, you probably won't get the same color again. And of course, being a yellowy color, it requires multiple layers. This yellow is probably the worst color to paint with because it just is almost transparent. So you have to layer and layer and layer with yellow. And I find that with oranges as well. Red's not so bad. Then we move on to the rest of the clothing, that well, rest of the non-metallic clothing, and we're using Army Painters Army Green.
as you can see with these wrist guards i'm doing the entire thing in army green but in the artwork it's sort of it's almost all metallic but when you look at the miniature itself it doesn't look right like if i did that entire thing metallic it's just essentially a massive bracelet that won't fit over his hand so i've gone with the army green on that and then the spikes will be metallic but then we move on to now monster brown which is for all the leather i was originally going to use leather brown but i wanted something a bit more vibrant as a lot of this mini is going to get, get well the entire mini gets a strong tone wash so it obviously darkens everything back down if i use leather brown for that it goes almost black and i didn't want that so i've gone with Le um, monster brown as it gives it that bit more vibrance and and still contrast with what the colors that are on there but this is just for any straps that are on the model that there's a few around his hand he's got his belt um there are also toggles on the back of his calves that i believe i do with this but i don't think i saw them straight away so i don't do them in the clip to my knowledge Oh, I do do them in the clip, fair enough. But yeah, that's the small toggles on there and he has the satchel on his back. Which I didn't actually notice until I started actually painting the model. Because <laughs> it's very well blended in with the skirt thing. But that was it for Monster Brown. Now we're on to Werewolf Fur. And this takes about six layers to do. Because my Werewolf Fur wasn't shaking up enough when I started painting. So I just slowly worked my way through. But it's just for the beard and around the back of the head. I don't use this for anything else. There we go, that's the beard in place. And then we're going to move on to the metallics now, which is Army Painter's Gunmetal. And this is literally all armor, all buckles, all studs. Everything is done in this one metallic color. I don't swap them out for any other ones. He does also have some sort of, from what I can tell, there are bits of sword and things that have been jammed into his leg and broken off where other adventurers have tried to kill and bring it down before and they're just stuck in there. So I quickly give all these a nice metallic look and then there is one of them that you can actually see go through skin. So I've given that a blood, uh, blood color, which I do a bit later on. This, ignore this part i got this very wrong and didn't realize until later on but i basically painted in a metal shoulder pad but it's actually just exposed skin <laughs> so it should be the skin tone that for some reason i managed to leave when i've done the skin but yeah that don't do the shoulder pad in metal just do the shoulder as skin because it is a pain to go back and repaint over that with corpse pale
but then we move on to desert yellow and this is all fingernails toenails and teeth it's just a case that with this model the fingernails are actually like sculpted on so you can clearly see where they are and just you just got to dab them in and it's ready to go and same with the teeth because the mini is so large it has everything sculpted so it's easy to pick them out and just touch them up with color i also do the eyes in this but i come back after the wash and do them in a much lighter yellow but now we're moving on to crusted saw which is obviously in the mouth just because he has got his mouth open you have to do a sort of pinky yellowy or pinky ready color but then also he has scars and cuts and things in the artwork and the model has similar things on it so i've quickly gone over and just dotting them in but i do make them look a lot more prominent afterwards it's just for now i just paint them in and there's the random bit of wood sticking through his shoulder and this just it basically highlights every area that's like hurt or wounded and requires some extra work but then we're moving on to the main part which makes the mini it makes the mini basically finished but you can go on after this as well this army paint is a strong tone but after the wash is done the mini is you can happily bring that to the table and it'll be fine but i figured it's such a centerpiece mini it's time to do some highlighting and i don't normally do it in my videos so i'm gonna do it for this one now normally for skin as well you wouldn't use something like strong tone as it basically makes the skin look filthy which is pretty good for what we want and if you highlight up afterwards it's perfect if you don't highlight up i wouldn't recommend using strong tone on the skin i would go for something much lighter maybe even soft tone or light brown but that was it for the tone now we come back to demonic yellow which is i just dot in the eyes just to make them pop out a bit more and now we're on to the main part of the highlighting which is corpse pale so i'm basically going over all the skin again any raised area or area that's not recessed i'm doing in corpse pale and if i was really going for it i'd go over with corpse pale and then come up to another one higher up which for army painter would have been mummy robes as that is an off-white in the area of the um peach color which is what skin would be but for this it didn't need it once corpse pale's gone on it looked perfect how it was and with minis like this as well it doesn't matter too much if you make a few mistakes as you can come back and do crusted saw over um well i do that in this video but i'll tell you now as well if you make some mistakes you can always cover it up with a little crusted saw and glistening blood as it makes it look bloody and wounded and it covers any mistakes and still makes it look like a part of zombie side As you can see that the skin is really starting to pull itself together and it's starting to look more that realistic look but he's still got that grimy look of a zombie which is what you want but that is it that is the skin done now i don't go back and change any of that now we're going on to gunmetal which is like an edge highlighting and any non-recessed area just to bring the color back up and let the shine come through 
because washes tend to hide the shine and dull the paint so coming back over it just gives it that like sparkle again It was at this point in the model I've realized it could be finished and I could leave it like this, but I've gone so far, I might as well highlight everything back up. So I'll move on to army green and just start going back through that. It's the same process, anything non-recessed, paint it back in. there we go that's the army green done and then move on to the final part of the highlight stage which is fire lizard and it's just bringing that orange back up to orange essentially instead of the sort of off brown that it was before like it was like a yellow ochre color after the wash and the orange the fire lizard just brings it back up again makes it pop there we go that's the base colors and the washes highlighting all done then we move on to the base which is matte black and normally this would be where i'd end the model but as you see later on there's another stage afterwards where i add the crusted saw and the blood and splatter and things but if you don't want to add any of that this is the model complete you just varnish up and get ready to go there we go we move on to crusted saw now and I wasn't happy with the beard, so I've done a bit down the beard in the front and his hands are obviously where he's been grabbing things and any of the wounds he has as well. I've done them so it looks like he's freshly been um, turned and he's bleeding out. But there we go. That's it for the model. And there's the final images. And this is a great model to paint. I recommend this if you own the set. But cheers for watching, guys. Like, subscribe if you did enjoy it and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.